Hey there, everybody. I am joined by Andy, and we have another, was this number 12, 13, 14? Something kind of like lost that. count of, of our, our sort of deck tech. Uh, this is a dark side deck, and I'm pretty curious to learn a little bit more about it, sort of a TIE fighter deck. So, Andy, do you want to kind of walk us through the starting package and what this deck is intended to do? Yeah, sure. So this is a Premier through Death Star 2 era TIE fighter deck. Um, this has a lot of resiliency and it can actually be really annoying to play against. But basically, you're going to start the this objective, Imperial Occupation, which most people would know as the operatives objective. Um, you're never going to use anything of this card other than the starting stuff. So I'm just going to go over that, which is deploy any planet system and one diamond site to that system. That's all you need from this card. You're going to start... Milwaukee. This is an anagram for Milwaukee. So walk walk a walk a something like that. Um, it's a one zero system. Is that, is that a real fact, by the way? Yep, it's an anagram for Milwaukee. Okay, that's that's a great piece of trivia right there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you're gonna start Milwaukee, and it says if caught on table, force generation plus two for you here. So that's gonna be your system, and then you can start one diamond site. So you're gonna start the jungle. Um, and can't deploy to some systems it doesn't actually matter what any of your tech says you're never going to deploy here all it matters is your opponent has uh, four strain minus one here so they can't drain you there mm -hmm. um really you're only doing that so that you don't just start with wakomui and only activate two force on your first turn this actually gives you three force on your first turn which you know is obviously better and in a real pinch can give you a ground site to put vader at to get around battle plan but i'm getting ahead of myself so you're gonna start wakamui in the jungle and then you can start prepared defenses which lets you play three um effects that are always immune to alter so those ones that you're going to start is going to be mobilization points this is probably the best dark side card that decipher like ever print it. <laughs> it's so good. Um, so you're gonna start mobilization points. You're gonna start oppressive enforcement. Uh, you could, yeah, you just start oppressive enforcement and then you've got some options on what you want your third one to be. You could start, there is no try if you think your opponent, like if your opponent starts like throne room, um, you might start, there is no try just because sense and alter can really hurt this deck um so you want to have like a lot of sense alter protection um otherwise you could start secret plans i don't really recommend it it's not that great um maybe against like profit you might start secret plans um your other options are first strike which you're almost never going to start and then leave them to me which um this is the anti-operative one but really you're just using it for um this last sentence, which is at any time you may place effect out of play to retrieve one force. Um, so most of the time I'll actually start, leave them to me, mobilization points and oppressive enforcement. The ability to retrieve one force with this deck um, really is key because there's a couple of cards that you like really have to get out um to make it work and if you like lose one early you can just immediately retrieve um that one card so those are going to be my first three and then what you're going to do is before you activate you're going to use mobilization points game text to pull you can pull caridia wakamui gall caught or rendili or executor from reserve deck so you're going to pull out caught um which it doesn't really matter what any of the game text on this says. It's more so so that you get force generation plus two from your starting system. So you'll activate three, you'll play caught. So now you'll be activating at least six. And then from there, you have a couple of things that you're trying to do. Um, so you wanna get Commander Marajik out um, because when he's present at a scomp link, you can um, deploy a battleground system, which you could be, you know, you have Korlog, Endor, Kashik, Kessel, Kifix, and Solust 
as your systems that you can pull out. So he's going to, he's going to help you with your force activation, but these are also the best dark side systems in the game. So um, Kessel and Kashik being, you know, numbers one and two for best systems. Um, but you have Endor, Kashik, Kifix, and Solist all are drain two systems. Kessel's just good because it makes all your stuff deploy minus and they need six ability. And you can convert your opponent's Kessel if they're playing their own version of Kessel. And then um, Kessel, Endor, Kashik, and Solist are all at high parsec numbers, seven, eight, and six, seven, eight. Whereas Wakamui, Kifix, and Caught are all at low parsec numbers, uh, one and two. So Core Lag being a four stream minus one system, let's you, at at um, parsec four lets you move between um, your low numbered systems to your high numbered systems. So you can always get around, which is why you have that. But basically, what you end up doing is you want to play Signer Fleet systems, so you can use um, Twilight Advisor, you know, kind of naturally draw it. Deploy on Wakamui. Each time you deploy a tie, retrieve one force, or three if it's a tie squadron. Also, once per turn, you can relocate a tie just lost from table to your used pile. So every time you play a tie fighter, you get to retrieve one. Then when you play a tie assault squadron, which tie assault squadrons, um, they don't have a deploy cost. They just replace three tie fighters, and those ties go to your used pile you can then retrieve three so basically what you do is you play a tie fighter you retrieve one you play a tie fighter you retrieve one you play a tie fighter you retrieve one you play a tie assault squadron you retrieve three and put the three tie fighters you just deployed back into your used pile so you retrieve six you can use all power to weapons um, in a battle to make all your ties power plus two and immune to attrition, or you can use it as a lost function, which is lose a force to take three non-unique ties into your hand. So you could lose a force, lose the all power weapons, go get three tie fighters, then play three tie fighters, retrieving your all power to weapons and your force that you lost. So there's a big retrieval engine here. Um, if you ever lose a tie fighter, sign your fleet systems can send it to your used pile so you can draw them again. You have short range fighters. Um, so the second part, or take one non-unique star fighter into hand from reserve deck. So you can short range fighters to go get a tie, play a tie fighter, retrieve a force. Uh, your other options that you have, you have dreaded Imperial star fleet. So this one, you can put a non-unique uh, star fighter onto it to cancel force strain anywhere. And then you can deploy star fighters off of it. So it lets you cancel one of your opponent's drains and then return to base is like a back to tank for ships. So use four force to deploy on your side of the table. If you just lost a starship, you can place it here. It holds one starship at a time. During your deploy phase, you can use X force to bring a starship to hand where X equals the deploy cost of that. So your TIE fighters deploy for one. So you could use one force to put your, if you lose a tie, like let's say you lose two ties. One goes to your use pile from signer fleet systems. One goes to return to base. You can use a force to pick up your tie fighter and replay it. If you lose a tie assault squadron, you can pick it up for free because it doesn't have a deploy cost. Um, and then really you're just going to your systems, your dreadnoughts, make your ties power each power plus one. So a TIE Assault Squadron gets power plus three, because three TIE Fighters. Um, same with a TIE Assault Squadron and all powered weapons. It gets power plus six, because it's three TIE Fighters. Um, and then, but it only counts as one ship. <laughs> so you can put a TIE Assault Squadron and three TIE Fighters onto your Dreadnought, and because it carries four TIEs. Um, so there's like weird things with squadrons, but your dreadnoughts basically carry your ties and you fly around and drain in space and retrieve all of the cards. If you ever get where like you might have like a bunch of your tie fighters out and you have like not as many tie assault squadrons out or something and you have like a big loss pile, like it's like seven or eight cards, you can use the first function of short range fighters once per game, target one non-unique starfighter, tie fighter. On table, draw destiny. If destiny is less than X, retrieve X force where X equals the number of copies of the cards. Like if you have like six tie fighters on table and 
you know, a bunch of force lost, you can use the first function of short range fighters, retrieve your lost pile. Um, other than that, ability, 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 you're going to have more cards with ability than your opponent. You have like a ton of high fighters that are constantly cycling in and out. So they're going to have to deploy something every single turn or they lose two force. You have just some staple cards that are good in most matchups like Come Here You Big Coward, Secret Plans, three, ver three copies of Grabbers because you want to grab, it could be worse. You want to grab just a bunch of like different light side interrupts that can be really annoying for you. Um, so three grabbers and they deploy for free because you're going to start oppressive enforcement. And then well guard it is just a hedge against Grimtash so that, you know, if you needed to draw like a hand of like 18 cards or something and your opponent Grimtashes you, they don't take all your you know, duplicate non-unique cards, which would be Dreadnoughts, TIE Assault Squadrons, and TIE Fighters. And they're not going to get really anything else if they Grim Tash you. Um, as far as defensive cards, you have two copies of Darth Vader with Lightsaber. Now, Commander Marajik is a spy, so you can also just go like, like if you didn't put Commander Marajik on, you know, a Dreadnought early on to start pulling your Battleground systems out, you can, you know, Commander Marajik to, say, their Hoth docking bay, then play Vader and beat up on whoever they left there to get force activation off of um, staging areas. So, so real quick, Marajik is a, I'm sorry, the Dreadnought is a Skomplink? I didn't realize that, I guess. Yep, right here. This is Skomplink. Oh, yeah. I, I actually have never seen that. Look. I mean, I've seen it. I just didn't realize it was there. Huh. <laughs> and then you have U3PO who can go block a drain. Um, there's the only other card to really talk about is overwhelmed, which is a lost interrupt during your deploy phase, target a system where your total power is more than double opponent's total power. The opponent has no Jedi or starship weapons. Um, the only starship weapon that really gets played is X-Wing laser cannons, which is pretty good against you, but it's like, unlike, like if they have say like a super Falcon, they've got the Falcon with Captain Han and Leia on it. You can easily get more than double their power and then you place all the opponent's starships at that system into their used pile so then they have to like activate and draw all these ships back cards back again and stuff so sometimes it can slow you down um overwhelmed also works where like you can set it up to get rid of landing claw because it just puts all of your opponent's starships at that system into their used pile, whether they have attached the landing claw to your dreadnought or not, because landing claws are like just one of those cards that's really annoying to deal with. Um, mm. If you ever try to cancel landing claw with Captain Goodhart or those rebels won't escape us or homing beacon, it only does it during the move phase. And then usually if you're playing landing claw, you have a barrow win and they'll just like retrieve the landing claw and replay it and attach again. So it's very difficult to beat a landing claw. Overwhelmed is one of the cards that can do it. And that'll allow you to just continue draining in space. Um, the reason I said you would probably start leave them to me is because you don't want to lose. Um, if you do lose one of your signer fleet systems early, it's a way that you can retrieve it if you need to. But you don't really want to lose, leave them to me, or um, return to base or dreaded Imperial Starfleet, um, as those are kind of two very good cards in your deck. Similarly, if you ever do lose like a TIE Assault Squadron, because TIE Assault Squadron is really the card that makes this deck tick because it can recycle your TIE Fighters over and over and over again. And then you put the TIE Assault Squadron on the return to base to draw it again, to play it again on your TIE Fighters and can just continue feeding that retrieval engine, um, you'll want to place, leave them to me out of play to retrieve your TIE Assault Squadron so you can draw it later. Similarly, if they play like, like if they're really heavy on ground and you want to use U3PO, but they have a sorry about the mess and they kill U3PO, you can then use leave them to me to pick your U3PO back up so that you can play them again the next turn. It's unlikely that they probably have two copies of Sorry About the Mess. 
It gives you essentially a third copy of Vader or a third copy of Commander Marjic if you really needed it. Or you could go back and get your other copy of Overwhelm. So like if you're on multiple systems, you can overwhelm your opponent at one system, then put leave them to me out of play to pick up your copy of um, Overwhelm to draw it again later to use again if they like keep recurring a landing claw or something or you know your control so again the control is just in here because sometimes it is worth it to lose two force to sensor alter a card and put it back into your deck just so that's off the table for like two or three turns so you can control to cancel the sensor alter or if they just have like one turn where they're draining you for like four at a site you can control it and just lose one card instead of a bunch so um that you can then get advantage in drawing your cards back or retrieving cards back with tie fighters but yeah you know, all you're doing is just playing tie fighters retrieving force playing tie assault squadrons recycling your ties retrieving more force and then cycling them all through your deck over and over and over this, and over and over and over and over again until you eventually drain your opponent out because they just can't hang in with you when you're retrieving like two to five force every single turn this, this feels like the kind of game that might be strings. yeah i mean this feels like the kind of game that might be like two hours long i mean retrieval is like i think one of the most frustrating things in star wars ccg to me because it just extends the game indefinitely right where you you um, but this is fun. I mean, this is kind of a fun concept to play with and a fun twist on the operatives. Just simple, <laughs> relatively speaking. It also just reminds me how many uh, special edition cards there are that I just have no awareness of. <laughs> it's like such a big set. I'm just like, oh, there's a bunch of stuff in there that does interesting little applications. Sure. And, you know, I think uh, one thing that you can also look at is this is a pretty, like if you're, trying to build it for like real life play. This is a very inexpensive deck. Um, yeah. You know, Commander Marjic's probably a few to several dollars because he's a good ISB agent. So he'll get played in a bunch of stuff. Invader with Saber is going to be several bucks. u 3 pos a couple bucks. Dreaded Imperial Starfleet, Return to Base, Signer Fleet Systems, Short Range Fighters are all a couple bucks. Maybe Imperial Control too, but like all these TIE Fighters are you know, everything else is mostly commons and uncommons. So, yeah. and it's like, you don't really need Commander Marjic and Vader and U3PO in this deck. They're just good and, like, safeguards if your opponent does some, like, crazy stuff. But you could always just replace them with, like, five more TIE Fighters if you really wanted to. Um, yeah, so, I mean, this is a deck you could make for under... $30, maybe even under $20. I mean, the, the Vader's, you know, but let's say under $30, I think. 30, yeah, 30 to 40 bucks. You could probably build this whole deck. Um, you know, so it's, it's very cheap. It's budget friendly, but it's really good. It This has a lot of staying power and randomly can just beat your opponents. Like I, I will link you to a replay of a game where I was light side playing against a, not this exact deck this is my version of this deck but it's very very similar like probably 95 percent the same um the game went on for like an hour and 10 minutes so watch it in 3x speed but it just i at one point had like oh like eight or nine light side starships out i had han and luke and leia and a super uh, home one and this deck just plowed through me um this is very this is actually probably one of the best decks in premiere to death star 2 for dark side um it's just not like a really flashy deck the way that like bring him before me or hunt down is yeah i mean it's it's super unsexy but it's it's i, I also guess one of the weaknesses is like you're gonna have kind of low destiny draws right i mean i'm assuming you're gonna get all your systems out but like ties being one, you know, you want to cycle those into your hand, I guess. But you're you're gonna have somewhat low destiny draws. You don't really on. care. You're gonna put, you know, a tie assault squadron on return. You're gonna forfeit a tie assault squadron onto return to base. You're gonna lose a few cards, and then you're just gonna retrieve them all the next turn. Hmm. There's not really unless your opponent's playing like really heavy surprise assault, where they can like surprise assault your tie fighters, and they're drawing like fives and sixes. Um, there's, 
doesn't really matter that you're going to draw low. Um, the deck that kind of does well against this is Mind What You Have Learned, just because they can, I mean, really they're only canceling your four stream bonus at um, Kashik, but you know, at some point, like they're not going to interact with you at all for the first, you know, five or six turns. And then suddenly they're going to put a, a zero or a seven and R2 or red five on test five. And then they're going to draw seven for every single destiny for the rest of the game. And that can kind of hurt you um, because they're going to be on the edge, off the edge, which is why you have so many grabbers. Like you have to get that those two cards against mind, what you have learned. And then other than that, they're going to put like Wedge on Red Squadron 1 with an X-Wing laser cannon. They're just going to be shooting all your stuff out of the sky, canceling your destiny and drawing a 7 for battle destiny. And they'll eat through your ships very quickly um, once they get going. So Mind What You Have Learned is probably the worst matchup for this. But um, Profit can be a little bit difficult just because they're doing direct damage to you, but you should be able to retrieve and then hurt them with ability, ability, ability between a well-timed Vader and a U3PO and canceling a drain with dreaded Imperial Starfleet. Um, they're not really going to do a ton of damage, but that's going to be probably the least interactive game of Star Wars you'll ever play because <laughs> you're never going to go to the ground and they're never going to go to space and you're just going to sit there and force damage against each other. That's oh. it. Um, well, but that's old yeah. school Star Wars for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean this. This looks like a lot of fun, Andy. Thanks for thanks for sharing this, and we'll have the deck list in the video description, and uh, we'll link to this uh, two hour match that you described that that people can sure. watch it at two times speed. <laughs> Sounds um, good. So th thanks, Andy, for for walking us through another deck, and I think we got a lot more of these in us. We, we'll do some episode one stuff, I think, in the future. So Yeah, episode one, I know people want to see it. It's just it's so hard to build episode one decks because they're just either so broken or they're just not good. <laughs> yeah. There's not, I have some very not good ones. ones. That's, that's like what I've tried to make objective work that just don't work. But yeah. Um, okay. Well, that's that's something for the future and please comment video ideas stuff that you like you know you want to see more of this was our attempt at kind of a budget deck so sure. uh well we'll see everybody next time all right have a good one